Drivers beware when financing your repairs. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the do's and don'ts when financing your repairs. Those little pretty pamphlets in front of your face that says finance now, be careful because you don't wanna get yourself into a situation where your truck is gonna get repossessed. I see this lots of times. I'm gonna be talking about stories that I've seen throughout the years. I'm sure you guys have a lot of stories that you'd be able to share, but let's see and let's go into the legalities of what can happen when you finance your repairs. So financing your truck repairs. Now I'm constantly going to be talking about the same story with a driver who has, who put eight new drive tires on his truck. And the reason I'm going to be bringing up the story is because it actually happened to one of our owner operators here. Um, so it's fresh in my head, even though it happened about seven or eight years ago, but I still remember the story because it was just a traumatizing story for the owner operator. And I'd like to give off this information to you guys in order to uh, educate you guys to not finance your repairs because these uh, these finance companies really, really, really have you on a lockdown and can really do some brutal and nasty stuff that can end your career. So here we are now, you have one or two really bad drive tires and you're thinking to replace all eight. Well, that's a $3,500 expense here in Canada, in the US, I don't know how much it is, but I'm pretty sure it's not far off. You're looking at about five to $600 per tire, multiply that by eight tires, best case scenario, you're getting between $3,500 to $4,000 for that repair. Well, it's very hard as an owner operator to come up with $3,500 to $4,000. So there's this beautiful pamphlet sitting there uh, that says, you know, finance your tires. Well, then you give this company a call, you finance your tires. Well, guess what? Now all of a sudden, you know, you came out of that shop and you didn't pay a thing. They financed your $4,000 bill and somehow I'm sure that they were able to convince you not to go with eight. They also convinced you to put two more tires on the front. So now you are with a $5,000 bill because you decided to change your two steer tires also. So that $5,000 bill, basically what happens is that they finance it over the course of 24 months. So they say to you, listen, it's only 150 or $250 a month. Um, you know, that sounds a lot better than kind of co coming up with $5,000. So what do they do? They slap a lien on your truck. Okay. So basically anybody that's, you know, that, that supplies something for your truck or, you know, they, they put the new tires on the truck. Um, it's called a mechanics lien. Uh, any, any mechanic that has done work on your truck or put parts or labor or service on your truck is able to put a lien on your truck. Now this gives them a lot of right to your truck. So what you can't do is you won't be able to sell your truck to somebody else without paying off this lien. Now there are some companies that go the extra mile, especially these finance companies. And that's why I'm giving you this information because I don't want you to fall into this trap. Let's talk about default. So with a finance company who is giving you the loan for your tires or a mechanics lien, they have unbelievable recourse. Okay. This type of financing is usually the highest interest uh, financing out there. So they, they usually charge about 18%, 19%, 22%, 25%. The rates are through the roof. And these, le these loans are usually the best secured loans for them. So really it's money in their hand. Now let's talk a little bit about what a default is. Okay. So if you default on their loan, okay, which means a late payment is considered a default, a bounced payment is considered a default, uh, an NSF check is considered a default, and your credit card being declined is considered a default. So if you have pre-authorized payments through your credit card, a pre-authorized uh, payments through your bank account, um, so any if the payment does not go through it automatically considers a default. Now, nobody's gonna be giving you a call and letting you know. What are they gonna do? They're gonna send you a mail. They're gonna send you something in the mail. Well, guess what? Truck drivers are usually never home. They're on the road most of the time. Now, within 15 days after they send out that mail, that's it, you're done. They're gonna call their buddy, which is a bailiff who they use constantly. They're gonna send him the registered mail that went to your house. You're in default. Well, now guess what? Now they can repossess your truck, okay? So I'm just gonna play out what it is that they do and then we'll maybe come up with ideas of what, uh, what we can do in order to avoid being in these situations. So 
there are two scenarios that's going to happen once the bailiff has your contact info he's coming after your truck whether you want to or you don't want to they have access to uh to see these bailiffs have access to see where your truck is plated so if your truck is plated with a company like ours for example they know that the et et transport yard they go on our website they see that the yard is either in um, you know in Milton or in Concord Ontario so the bailiff is just going to do a spin around the Milton yard he's going to do a spin around the Concord yard and he'll do that two or three times until he finds your truck once he finds that truck that's it he repossesses the truck and he takes it to the compound of where the finance company wants it to be delivered so here's where the interesting part comes owner operator has absolutely no idea what's going on I mean he got a registered mail to his house which usually people don't even open the mail these days I know I'm very you know I open my mail maybe once a month so they repossess the truck now all of a sudden you come to the yard you're supposed to go go out on a load and wherever you park your truck guess what your truck is not there so what do you do so you kind of try to find out what happened in this owner's owner operator situation he got us to look into the cameras to see who in the world repossesses truck well all of a sudden we see ABC towing so we contact ABC towing and they told us that oh you know there's a lien on the truck from this and this company and then the story kind of unfolded and we got all the information about the truck. So this $4,000 tire bill, okay, now all of a sudden you need to pay for, these are the charges, the extra charges that happens. So there's two types of owner operators that are in this situation. Owner operator number one, who's completely paying, pay, finished paying off his truck. So he has an asset that somebody just repossessed. Owner operator number two has this truck financed, right? So he still owns uh, a loan on this truck okay now if you're the guy that still owns a loan on the truck you might think twice whether you want to pay the bailiff which is somewhere between $750 to $1,250 you're going to pay the towing charges which is just a, as much $750 to another $1,250 the storage charges so these guys are brutal they're going to charge you $150 to $300 a day until you cough until you finish paying off the bill now your bill is not going to be the original four thousand dollars that you paid for the tires they're going to charge you interest to term what does that mean so the way that they financed your your tires so over the course of uh two years you were supposed to pay not four thousand but you were supposed to pay fifty two hundred dollars with interest so whenever this thing happens to you you're no longer paying four thousand dollars you're paying fifty two hundred dollars you're paying interest to term and then plus all their nonsense their admin fees and whatever paperwork fees they have so this five four thousand dollar bill now just became an eighty five hundred dollar bill with all their charges okay so let's go over that again they're going to charge you for the bailiff fee they're going to charge you the towing fee they're going to charge you the storage fees so the more you think about it now you need to come up with eight thousand dollars literally within today because tomorrow it's going to be 8300 and the next day it's going to be 8600 and the day after that it's going to be 8900 dollars well this is how owner operators lose their trucks okay at some point they raise their hand up and they say okay I'm, i can't I, I, there's no way i can come up with this with this money well guess what for the finance company that finance these uh the tires even better they make more money because what's going to happen is when you lift up your hands then it's going they're going to be contacting the finance company that's on the hook for the, the majority of the loan. So if you had a finance company that loaned you the money for this truck, now this second finance company that did the financing for the tires is gonna contact your first co finance company. And if they want their asset, they're gonna be paying for the entire bill for the tires and for, the, um, for all these extra charges. So the finance company number one who loaned you the money for the truck is going to be paying finance company number two who financed your tires. Now they're gonna be paying a pretty hefty bill to take back the truck. So this is how owner operators get into trouble. Okay, now it's not really, the, it's not so much of the owner operator's fault. These finance companies have found loopholes in order to do these things to get their money a lot quicker. Plus now guess what? They're, 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 they're getting paid two to $300 per day for the storage of your truck okay if finance company number one is going to take a week to process paperwork and get them payment well guess what they just made another three hundred dollars a day multiply that by seven or eight days that it took them to get their their ducks in a row um, i want to talk to you guys a little bit about if you are in a situation that you're buying a truck or refinancing a truck or thinking of upgrading your truck i have created a link below and what it does is when you fill it out this link will go to four different finance companies okay so do not trust the recommended finance company of the dealership where you're buying the truck 
make sure you use this link below whether you're going to use them or not going to use them the least you can do is double check that the financing rates that you got for your purchase are competitive and the only way you're going to do that is if you click this link below you fill out this form that's literally going to take you between 20 to 30 seconds to fill out but it could save you thousands of dollars so if you are getting a quote from a finance company click this link below and make these four finance companies compete for your business i guarantee you the least you can do is you're going to come back to the finance company that you want to choose and you're going to chop their rates down and that would make me very happy if you're able to get better prices on your financing. So guys, click the link below and fill out that form and get these four banks to compete for your financing needs. Enough is enough. You need to make them compete against one another. So I went through all my notes, okay? I gave you the story. This has happened to one of my owner operators. I'm sure in the comments below, you will, you, you will hear a lot of drivers that this happened to, okay? So what are we gonna try to do? I wanna tell you these stories in order to educate you, to make you more profitable, to never get into these situations. So scenario number one, what are you gonna do? Hopefully you're not going to finance your repairs. Now the same thing happens with your turbo, the same thing happens with anything that happens with your truck. The only thing that I would recommend really to finance is if your engine blew up and you need a new engine, but I would highly cautious you to think twice whether or not you want to finance a new engine or put that money into a down payment to get a brand new one. But that's a conversation for a whole nother time. Okay, so what do we do? So what I would recommend to do is to call your credit card company and see if they will extend. If you're at your if your credit card only allows you up to $5,000 balance, I would call the credit card company to see if they will stretch you out to eight or nine thousand dollars so you can pay for that repair bill the last thing you want to do is finance your repair on the truck because this mechanics lien allows these finance companies to do whatever you, they want the second you default in your payment and defaulting in your payment really could be an accident but you get yourself into this whole mess because they just want to repo your truck because they'll get paid up to term and they'll make a lot more money from you okay now scenario number two the owner operator who finished paying off the truck and this happens to them most likely he's going to cough up the bill of eight or nine thousand dollars because he's not going to let somebody else take their truck be because if you don't pay the bill, then there's X amount of days that goes by before they start auctioning off your equipment. Really brutal companies to uh, to associate yourself with. The finance companies, anyone who has, is able to put the repair shops, it's all the same. The repair shops do the exact same thing and have the exact same uh, legal um, ability to come after your truck. So do me a favor, guys out there, please do not finance your repairs if you are able to pay with your credit card pay with your credit card if you're working for a reasonable company ask the company that you're working for to pay off the credit card and deduct it from you in one or two installments i know we do it here all the time for our owner operators the last thing you want to do is get into a situation like these owner operators and the people who are going to leave the comments if you have a story and i'm sure you do and i'm sure it's a nasty and brutal story because i hear about it all the time how trucks get repossessed and it could be for, for something as small as a thousand dollar repair it could be something as small as a fifteen hundred dollar repair they send you the mail on purpose because they know that you are not going to reply to it in time. They will repo your truck faster. They have the proof that they sent you registered mail. Whether you were home or not, that has nothing to do with anything. And the likelihood of you going into small claims court and fighting these finance companies off are slim to none. Nobody has the time for it. Nobody's going to do it. So guys, the ending of the story to the owner operator, which is probably has happened to multiple owner operators out there, if not hundreds and thousands of owner operators out there. The driver was not able to come up with an eight or $9,000 bill. He wasn't able to pay them off. So what happened was the finance company on the truck ended up paying the secondary, the one who financed the tires. They paid them their eight, $9,000 bill. They took the truck back. Um, and basically took their losses on the truck. So the owner operator lifted his hands. He said, you know what, enough is enough. His credit was shot. He did not work as an owner operator. It took him about four or five years to get back to himself because they destroyed his credit. Okay, he wasn't able to get a mortgage. He wasn't able to get a loan. He wasn't able to get finance for a newer truck. It took him about four or five years luckily he did not go under bankruptcy i do know this owner operator until today today after um you know many years he has become an owner operator again and i'm sure he learned a very very valuable lesson and he will never 
never finance his repairs. So don't be that guy, you know, call that credit card company, extend your credit on your credit card, um, take a private loan from a friend, uh, see if the company that you're working for will help you off with the repair. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is finance that repair. And if you are going to finance that repair, make sure that you do not default in the payment. Okay. I hope you learned something from this video. Um, if you took anything from this video, okay, it's do not finance I, as easy as it is, it is to sign those documents right now when you're at the dealership or when you're at the uh, mechanic shop or even at the tire store. Okay. As easy as it is, they will approve you in a heartbeat in a second. Whether you have good credit or bad credit, they don't care. They will repo your truck and that's what they're in it for. So hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, ring that bell, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm Ronan and I'll catch you in the next one.